What's up, guys? Happy Monday. It's Monday here on Guam. Um, we're going to do a quick deck. Well, actually, it is not a quick deck deck, but it will be a full deck tech. There will be no gameplay in this video. We'll, we'll try to mess with the deck maybe later on in the week, but there are so many, like, with the expansion out, there's just so many cool decks to try. Um, and if you've been playing on the ladder, you'll notice that there are, the meta is a lot slower. You don't really find a lot of Pirate Warrior, but you do see a lot of, like, Control Lock or Control Priest or... Uh, obviously Druid, both Jade Druid and um, the new Druid, which is like a taunt Druid, I guess. I don't I don't really know how to explain it. And all those decks are awesome, especially the, the Druid deck. Kalento's deck is pretty crazy. Ultimate Infestation, obviously the card is as good as everyone thought it would be. Um, and that deck runs rampant. So instead of doing a deck tech on that, I decided why don't we do a deck tech on a very fun deck that counters that exact deck. So Tanju is kind of a slow defensive type of deck, and what it does is if your opponent overcommits on the board, then it builds a bunch of taunts, and then it bolsters all the taunts, making it just really difficult to get through. And, you know, it has ramp, so it gets to 10 mana faster than you do, and it also deals 10 da uh, 5 damage, draw 5 cards, and puts a 5-5 five five on the board while gaining 5 armor. And it, and it does that, on your turn six or seven, right? Which is kind of crazy. Like that is a really strong power play and that deck is crazy. And it's difficult to beat that deck, but one way is to play mid-range Paladin. But there's another way to play, uh, to beat that deck and that's by playing uh, Quest Mage, right? So also called Exodia, right? People call it Exodia. And I guess that's because of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever. I think there's a card in one of those card games where you assemble a bunch of combo pieces and you win immediately, right? So that's basically how Quest Mage works. For Quest Mage, you want to complete your quests, achieve your quest. Then you want to have all your combo pieces in hand, and you want to take the extra turn, and you want to win with infinite fireballs on that turn. Now, there are a couple of win conditions for Quest Mage. In a previous video I did, uh, we show I showed you uh, how you could win with giants. You could complete the quest, drop some free giants, uh, take an extra turn. On the following turn, you play Alexstrasza, clear out, and then, you know, attack the face for 16 or 32 or whatever. Uh, in this particular meta, because of the way taunt druids, and, a lot, and there's just a lot of taunts. There's a lot of Lich King being played. There's just a bunch of taunts in the meta right now. Um, Creature-based combat, to me, is just not as secure a win condition as just going infinite fireballs. An infinite fireball is going to get you through a bunch of shit, like a bunch of armor or whatever. It's just it's just a cooler win condition. So what we're going to build here is I'm going to show you all the core cards for building Quest Mage with uh, with the combo, the infinite combo finisher. Um, I'll show you all the card draw options. I'll show you all the survival options. I'll show you the way to generate cards for it. Um, yeah, and I think that, that really covers Quest Mage. So without further ado, here we go. Here's Quest Mage. So, first of all, the most important thing about playing Quest Mage is how you win, right? The win condition. So, obviously, you need to play the quest, right? So, here's the quest. One mana, cast six spells that didn't start in your deck, right? And then you reward it with Time Warp. And what Time Warp is, it's a five mana card that you take a turn immediately after this turn. So, what we want to do is we want to complete the quest, play Time Warp, take another turn, and I'll win on that extra turn. So how we're going to accomplish that is by playing Sorceress Apprentice and copying it. So the way we'll copy it will be with Simulux, Simulacrum. S Simulacrum, right? That's what it's called, right? We're going to copy that and Molten Reflection, okay? And then we need an Antonidas. So, so here's how you win, right? You get the majority, well, you need these cards, okay? You need all of these cards except one Molten Reflection or Simulacrum, okay? Uh, but you need everything else, okay? So what we're going to do here is once we've completed the quest, right? Once we've completed six spells, created six spells, and we 
receive the quest in hand, and once we receive these cards in hand, right, or that we're going to guarantee to draw into it, right, like we know that there's one card remaining, so we know we're going to get the combo piece we're missing. Once we have achieved that, what we're going to do is we're going to play Double Sorceress Apprentice, Molten Reflection for two. Okay, so let's just, let's count the mana, right? So here it is, turn 10, turn 12, whatever. We play two Sorcerer's Apprentice, four mana, right? Six mana left. We play a Molten Reflection for two, because it's discounted by two, right? So that means it costs us six mana. We have four mana left, right? We're going to cast a Molten Reflection for one, because we have three, right? So that means we use seven mana, correct? Right? So now we have four, and now our Time Warp costs one. So we play Time Warp for one. We still have two mana left if we wanted to do anything. But assuming we don't, we take our next turn. We play Antonitis. We play any spell that's free, right? Which, I mean, any mage spell discounted by four, right? So that's, or any spell. Actually, it doesn't even have to be free. You just need to play a spell, right? Um, you play any spell, boom, you get a fireball. And since you have four Sorcerer's Apprentice on the field, that's free fireballs. So you just chuck fireballs to the face and win. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy, crazy idea. And it's cool. And it works. But this is the package you need. Samila so Carl is the new card from the set. And basically it copies the lowest card mini in your hand. And this works well. Like, for instance, if they play Dirty Rat and it takes one of your apprentices and you just need a backup one, you can use this to create another apprentice. Or against aggressive decks or something, maybe they're they're just putting a lot of pressure on your board and you need a second Doomsayer. You play this, you put another Doomsayer, you lay that on the board. So are there, there are different ways that Simulacrum is kind of a utility card, and this just adds to the consistency of the deck. Um, I wouldn't say it's needed, but I think I, I kind of like it. I would say it's core. Some people play two. I think two is too clunky. Um, but you know what I mean? Maybe that's the card you need, right? So here are the five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven core cards that you need in your deck, okay? So here are the seven core cards. Now, the deck, you can break it down into three, four major situations, okay? You need the core pieces, these six or seven pieces, or six to eight pieces right here. You need card draw. Now, it doesn't matter how many cards you have, but you need to draw, ideally, 13 cards, Okay, you need spell generators, and ideally you want to have spells that generate nine, or nine spells that can be generated. Okay, like eight to nine. I, I think that would be a safe number. And then lastly, you can fill the rest with survival. Right. So that's that's kind of the basis. So remember that you need the combo pieces. You need 13, 11 to thirteen pieces of card draw, I guess, and you need about eight or nine spell generators right so let's go let's look at the next slot i'm gonna go ahead and close this you see that well actually we'll just keep that on the board uh, yeah you know what maybe this is easier if i close it all out okay so let's talk about card draw what are the cards that draw you spells so let's let's look at it right oops what did i do there okay draw okay so archaeologist draws you a card that draws you one card I think it's pretty cool, so I play two. Some people play one. I think that's inconsistent, and I like two. Arcane Intellect is one of the best forms of card draw, so we're going to play two, right? That's just pure card draw. Now, here are a bunch of cards. Loot Hoarder, Blood Mage. You know what? Blood Mage actually could see play. Novice Engineer and Loot Hoarder. Now, Loot Hoarder is kind of cool in the sense that... Um, it's a nicer body than, say, Novice Engineer or Blood Mage. But this is a combo deck, and really you just want to reach the combo pieces faster. Uh, as such, I prefer Novice Engineer because late game, it's a better top deck, right? So we're going to put Novice Engineer. Now here are other choices. We have Acolyte of Pain. We have these four drops, which I don't really like. No, no, I guess we'll skip through that. Here's Acolyte of Pain. A lot of people do like Acolyte of Pain. To me, Acolyte of Pain is too slow. Uh, and I prefer to just go balls to the wall. And I like Cold Light Oracle. Now, Cold Light Oracle is equal to two. You draw two cards, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put, put Cold Light Oracle here. These four drops are kind of stale. You don't have creatures, so Cold Master is kind of lame. Uh, this, this card sucks. Not, no Machine Inventor is okay, but it's just too slow for what we need. Gadgetstan, you can't really run that in here. 
But curator is a card. So cur a curator is a special kind of package, a special card draw. So right, it draws you a beast, dragon, murloc from your deck. So if you play curator, you obviously want to play those other cards. So the other cards you can play are, well, we'll talk about curator later. Curator is card draw, but just remember. Uh, shit, I can't say. Remember, we can come back to curator, but you want at least or around 11 to 13 pieces of card draw. So how many pieces of card draw do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Because each of these draw two cards. 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 pieces of card draw. It's not ideal, right? But this is pretty good. And, I and you know, Colite Oracle is a really dangerous kind of card, right? So this would be like a package that I would like. Okay? Anyway. So that is card draw. So, so next is spell generation, right? So um, how do I... What is the... Discover? No, it's not discover. Uh, okay, well then let's what are the spell generations cards? Uh they're glyph, right? That's a card. Babbling book. Where is Babbling Book? Okay, Babbling Book, that's a card. Uh, conjurer, that's a card, right? Where is Conjurer? Conjurer mm, and Tomb, right? Okay, so here you need nine of these, or you need to generate nine of these, okay? So Babbling Book is a cheap one, but it puts something at random in your hand. Uh, Glyph is also good and allows you, like, you know, the cool thing about Glyph is if you play Glyph into another Glyph, you really, you know, then you've gotten a free spell off of it, and that's pretty solid. Uh, Glyph is just so strong, and it gives you utility. It's a very strong card. This is a core card. Uh, Ghastly Conjurer, so it gives you a body and you always add the mirror image. And the nice thing about mirror image is that... Uh, uh, the nice thing about mirror image is that you can play it once you have your combo pieces, even if you haven't completed the quest, you know? Because it's going to be free, right? You know for a fact it's going to be free. So, but the only thing that sucks is you have, it's attached to this body, which is kind of weak. You know, in my mind, it's kind of weak, but I don't know. Uh, and Kabbalist Tome, like, so this draws you three spells, and assuming you can play all three spells and they don't ruin your board, like Volcanic Potion, then this is pretty good. But that is a real kind of problem. So, remember, we want nine sources of card draw here, right? So, two books, that's two source. Two glyphs, that's two, so... I'll add another glyph, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would have to play Kabbalist Tome to have nine, right? I, I would have to play at least one, right? So that, that that's where the deck building is kind of limited. But another option that's not shown here, but has synergy with something like Archonologist is Mana Bind, right? So Mana Bind gives you a free spell to play that it's your opponent's spell. So I do like that. I think that's a pretty good card. Um, yeah, this is pretty much, these are the cards that are available to you in the spell generation package, right? And you want to be able to generate nine spells, right? So some kind of combination. Uh, some of these are quick, right? Glyph, uh, Battling Book. Some of these are have power, right? Catalyst Stone gives you three. And some of them are anti-aggressive, right? Ghastly Conjure, Builds a Body, gives you a spell that can block weapons, right? So... So that, that is the spell generation uh, part of it. So we talked about combo, the card draw, and generation. So last is survival, right? And survival is just all about getting to the end so you can draw into the answers. Now, there's obvious survival choices, right? Like... Uh, or, well, removal, right? Like, you know, there's Fireball, there's Meteor, there's fucking Flame Strike. But what we want to do is just stall the board no matter what. So it doesn't matter how big creatures get. If you freeze them, they're not going to attack you. So that's what survival is. So we want Ice Block. Okay, we want Frost Nova. 
We want the opponent quota is okay, but it's just uh, limited, right? We want Blizzard. I guess we could take a Frostbolt. I personally like Frostbolt and then Doomsayer, right? Doomsayer is pretty sick, so. This to me is a survival package. I don't know how many cards you would need in a survival package, but the more the better. But the problem is you don't want to play too much survival so that you're not drawing enough into your win conditions or generating enough spells. Because if you play back-to-back -back survival turns without drawing or generating, you're still not going to complete the quest. Eventually, your opponent is going to find a critical mass that's going to go over your stall, right? So you need to find a nice balance, right? So these are all cards you see up here that I would consider for the stalling package, right? You see all these cards right there, like Ice Block's awfully good. A card that I didn't mention is Ice Barrier, right? Which is another secret. So maybe you don't play Mana Bind. Maybe you find your uh, card generation somewhere else, and instead you play Ice Barrier, which will prevent you 8 damage, right? So, and you know, the interesting thing is, like, you don't necessarily have to wipe some of these boards with Doomsayer Nova. Like, just playing the Doomsayer there and having the opponent trade into it uh, saves you 7 damage. And it allows you another turn to stall the board with the Freeze Effect. And then you can play a Nova the next, or a Doomsayer later, or a Freeze Effect later. So, remember, like, I think, personally, Frost Nova, Blizzard, and Doomsayer is core. So those are six turns of freeze, basically. Right? One bl two Blizzard turns, two Nova turns, two Ice Block turns. Six turns where you can stall a board. Um, and that should be nice enough to help you pass turn, you know, it, at turns like 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right? And, and slightly past that. Hopefully that is enough for you to win the game and draw out into your win condition, right? Now, so now we've talked about all the different things in the deck, but let's talk a little bit about two tech choices. I personally have not tried, well, I've tried the Curator Package, so we'll talk about the Curator Package first, right? So, let's try Curator. So the Curator draws you a Beast, a Dragon, a Murloc, right? So you want to draw. A cold light oracle. You want to draw King Muckler. If I can find King Muckler, where's this guy? Oh, ring handed. Uh, Muckler. Oops. Oh, okay. And uh, you want to draw Astraza, right? So maybe even a, uh, probably not a primary, primordial trait. So. So what Curator does is, assuming you didn't draw any of these other cards, you're going to draw three extra cards from your deck. So that's pretty nice. It thins your deck by three. And by playing Curator, that means you can limit the amount of card draw you have in your deck. Maybe you don't need to play the Novice Engineers. Maybe you don't need to play the Cold Light Oracles. Or maybe you don't need to play Double Archonologists. But the, the paradox here is that because this draws you so many cards, it forces you to play other cards. It forces you to play a card like Alexstrasza, which is really just a survival card, I guess. Really. Like, really, it doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, maybe it can cheat you an early win, possibly a tempo play. Uh, but it doesn't do anything else. It draws you a Mukla, which is card generation, which is good, but at the cost of being really slow, right? Now you're forced to play this six-mana body. And uh, it draws you an Oracle, which is other card draw, which is going to draw you two cards. So, I mean, assuming assuming proper value, it's it's really difficult to assume, or it's very difficult to analyze whether that, that package is going to be helpful for you. Because while it does draw you a great deal of cards and put value in your hand, it makes you slower because you're spending these later game turns playing Mukla, playing Alexstrasza. Uh, that's kind of weak. The final other tech card I want to talk about is Hemet, right? So if you can just get the Hemet there, like, what's going on? Okay, so here's Hemet, Jungle Hunter, six. Destroy all cards in your deck that cost six. This cannot be played until you have either two, some combination of Sorcerer's Apprentices and Simulacrum. So you need at least one Sorcerer's Apprentice 
and you at least need a second source, either a sorcerer's apprentice or a simulacrum. Because that way what happens is you copy the sorcerer in your hand with the simulacrum, then you play Hemet, getting rid of all your cheap cards, everything. So the only thing left in your decks are combo pieces. Now the only combo pieces that cost more than three, Molten Reflection, Tomb, Tome, uh, whatever it's called, whatever, Arcane Tome, uh, Antonitis, and the Conjurer, right? So that's a quick way to like clear the the bulk of your deck out and just get to get to the combo. So assuming you do got like the two sorceresses apprentices, um, and let's say you have no more combo pieces in hand, but you're close to turn ten, you can play Hemet out there, and your next four or five draws are all combos. And if you have any draw cards in your hand, you are going to complete the quest in the next two or three turns. Now, the price you pay, though, is you get rid of everything else, all the survivability, all the other card draw options, and all the other card generating options. But likely, if you're going with this combo, you're running double simulacrum, so that you get the Sorcerer's Apprentice quicker, and you're also running double tome, so that you can generate extra spells more. If not double tome, then you're definitely running double um, uh, Ghastly Conjurer, okay? So that is... Uh, what is this deck called? Um, quest Mage in a Jiffy. So without further ado, I'm going to build my Quest Mage deck just by giving the info that I used to, or that I just told you, right? So first of all, I want the combo. So I want that. Uh, what the fuck? I need two of these guys, right? Sorcerer's Apprentice. I like one Simulacrum, so we'll grab one Simulacrum. And then we need Molten Reflections and... Oops. So we need two of these, obviously. Oops. Two of these. And then we need Antonitis, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards. Boom. Now, card draw. We want 13 card draw, right? 12 to 13. 12 to 13. So we're going to type in draw, right? I like double Arcanologist. I'm going to go for double Arcanologist. Oops. Obviously, Arcane Intellect is the best draw card for Mage. We're going to play that. Now, Blood Mage Thanos, I don't really have spells that do damage, right? I just have Blizzard. Um, so I don't really like the death rattle effect. I, I'd rather have volume to to get through it faster. So I play cold light, or I play a novice engineer. Do I want any of these late game ones? No. So let's see how much draw I want. Remember, I'm trying to get 12, 11 to thirteen. Okay, right. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight a volume of eight card draw things. So I still need at least four, right? So I don't want to play Acolyte. I think it's just too slow. I'd rather just, you know, and it might, I might only get one draw off of it. I want the power to draw. And to be fair, this is not the deck that you play versus aggro, okay? If there's a lot of Pirate Warrior, a lot of aggro druid, you don't play this deck. You're going to lose a lot, okay? This is a deck that you play for tournaments uh, or that you play in a meta that's very slow, like currently it is. So if you see a lot of druids, I would play this, but because I want to make sure that I win those matchups, I'm going to try to dig for the combo as quick as possible. That is what I want to do. So I'll play double cold line. So now I have 12 draw. That's my draw power, 12. Now, ideally, I want 13, but I don't want to get too greedy, so I'll leave it at that. Now, what's next? Next, I need spell generators, and I need nine of them, okay? So what do we do? What do we grab? Babbling Brook, I like. It's cheap. It's a cheap card. You throw it out there, whatever. You get a spell, right? Glyph, this is a must-have, right? So that's four. One, two, three, four. We still need five more cards, or five more generated cards. So we're looking at Conjurer and Tome. So do I play? Tome is worth three. Oh, actually, Mana Bind. Let's take Mana Bind. I like Mana Bind. I'm playing Double Archaeologist, so I want... I want three secrets, right? I already know I'm going to play double ice block, right? So let's get mana bind, right? So now my my card generation is at five. So six, seven, eight, nine. I need to generate four more. And I can do that by playing one Ghastly Codger. Let's play that because it's a cold one. And one Arc uh, Cabalist Tomb, right? So now I've generated nine. And I can just double check it by counting. One, two. Three. Oh, I, I missed a card shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
So I can generate nine spells. That is a, a nice uh, number on the probability chart in order to complete the quest in a reasonable amount of time, right? Now that leaves me with eight cards for survival, right? So survival, I want ice block, right? I want Nova and ice block. So Frost Nova, double ice block. I want Blizzard, double Blizzard, and I want Doomsayer. Now, boom, I have a deck. Uh, one card I didn't talk about, or no, I think I did talk about this card, is uh, Frostbolt. And Frostbolt is pretty nice because sometimes some decks, they play Vicious Fledgling, or they play a threat that you need to hit. You kind of got to get it off the board. Or they threaten you with the weapon. And while Blizzard freezes the board, it doesn't freeze the charge. So Druid, uh, Rogue, Warrior, they can get in on you. And I and having a Frostbolt uh, just provides that nice utility. But I, as you can see right now, I'm at 30 cards. So what I could do is remove a card and to add the utility. And now this is the this is that part of the game where you got to decide. Uh, where that value is for you. So, and additionally, what do I remove? So, like, if I remove, I can't remove card draw. I'm already low. I'm at 12 instead of 13. So, card draw is not something I want to remove, although I could. I could remove, well, I could, but I think it makes more sense to remove uh, card generation. So do I remove a conjurer? If I remove a conjurer, that means I'm at eight card draw. But if I do that, I can play double tone. But it might be clunky. It might be very clunky. So I mean, like right here is a situation where there's just so many options, right? Do I play the conjurer? Or do I remove the conjurer? Or do I remove? A, do I remove the conjurer? Play this. Shit! I guess I might have to remove an oracle. Oracle's pretty strong, though. I mean, it's drawing two cards. Well, the option. There's another option. I could remove conjurer. I could add a second tome. Right now, because now when we look at our card generation, we got one, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and then we got double tome, right? So that's another six. So that's 11. So we're actually two higher. So I can free up some space. I can free up one card, my mana bind. I like it. So it's either Glyph or Babbling Book, and Babbling Book, like, seems like the one I'd rather get or get rid of, and then I could play Frostbolt. And there you have it. Now I have a Quest Mage deck. Now this is actually not the deck that I would play, or well, I mean, I could play that, but my actual regular Quest Mage build is right here, and it is almost exactly the same, except I played a Cold Light Oracle instead of Babbling Book. Um, I did play the double tone. It's interesting. It is interesting. I don't know which one I keep. It's 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 still worth bouncing around. But there, there you go. There's two quest mage decks. We figured out figured them out and we built them using analytics and fact, right? So and I know, like, one question is, like, how did I come upon this number? Like, why do, why do I have to have 13 draw? Why do I have to have 9 card generation? Why do, you know, and I just based that off of a Reddit thread where a guy ran a simulation that put, that increased the probability of getting these cards. So I wanted the power probability to be over 90%. And to hit 90%, you have to have those numbers. So, so that's how I generated the deck. So I think if you follow this uh, archetype of, you know, combo piece, uh, 12, 11 to 13 card generation, or card draw, uh, eight, 8 to 10 um, card generation, uh, the rest survival, and then maybe the rest is the flex kind of things that you kind of fuck around with and figure out. 
um, you're going to be able to build a highly optimized Quest Mage deck. And I really feel that a lot of people say this deck is not viable. And I don't know what viable means, like uh, viable as in ladder viable. Like, okay, if you face aggro all the time, you're not going to win. You, I don't even know if you, I, honestly, I don't even know if it would be like a 30% win rate. Like, I don't know. Aggro is such a tough matchup. But this deck hoses Druids. Fucking destroys Druid. Fucking destroys the shit little decks. Probably almost 50-50 with Paladins. But it just shits on a lot of decks. And it's worth playing with. Worth giving a chance. Um, I hope you mess with the archetype. And we will do more videos later um, to show this deck. And, and we'll see if we can't improve on the play style. And see what works and what doesn't work. Thanks for watching.